Tremors, the 1990 classic movie, horror movie, uh, 30 years old. Uh, I remember when I was a child uh, watching this movie. It was one of my favorite movies. One, because it looked like the setting of this movie is like desert, uh, but kind of like, you know, mountains and stuff like Rocky Mountains. Very similar to the Coachella Valley or like the high desert surrounding the Coachella, Coachella Valley. Uh, like it could be this, like a small kind of town uh, outside of like desert hot springs or something like that. And uh, so as a kid, especially growing up, there was far less development in the Valley than there is now. So I was surrounded by a lot more desert in general. And the premise is that there's uh, these giant worms underneath the ground, these monsters underneath the ground, and that's what's caus causing earthquakes. And, of course, we got earthquakes. We're right along the San Andreas Fault. Uh, so we get a lot of earthquakes. Uh, we feel them. They're not, I don't think there's ever been anything that's been so big that it caused damage. Uh, like recently, I think there was maybe a 6.0 or something like that. Uh, not centered here. Um, but you know, probably like, I don't know, a way, a ways away. Um, but yeah, you'll feel those. So it'd be, I, I don't know there. I don't think there have ever been one that's been centered where the epicenter was anywhere close to here. They're usually more Northern California or like North of Southern California. So like South of middle California. Anyway. Uh, so it was very scary as a kid, you know, I'm fucking at, in 1990, which on VHS, let's say, let's give it, I don't know how long, what the turnover rate was moved for movies, like 91, 92. So maybe I was like 11, 12, uh, scary. And then when I have sleepovers with my friends, there was a fold out couch in the living room. So we'd watch scary movies, have the fold out couch, probably some popcorn. I remember going underneath the, the fold out couch. Uh, to scare my friend uh, who was, uh, you know, sleeping over. And uh, that was a very big highlight uh, of being able to watch this movie because I'd seen it, you know, so I knew it was scary. I know this big worm has, like, like uh, tentacles, like extra heads that are part of, like, his tongue, like, opens his mouth and the, or it, its mouth, and, uh, like, eight tentacles come out, and each of those tentacles has another mouth on the end of it. You know, so perfect for a hand. Uh, but yeah, I love this movie. So I rewatched it recently. It's been a while. There's been a bunch of sequels. See, it kind of falls off. You know, I still liked him as a kid, but I still like, oh man, it kind of it kind of falls off. I mean, Kevin Bacon was in the original. I don't think he shows up for any of the sequels. Uh, most of the sequels, I think Fred Ward uh, was in at least the, the the first sequel. He I don't know. He may have been in some other ones, um, but the 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 movie is supposed to be Arizona. It's not where I am in the Coachella Valley, but uh, looks very similarly. So it's a small town outside of like Bisbee, Arizona, which Bisbee is a, a small town at, from what I've heard anyway. Uh, Doug Stanhope owns it. He's the mayor. He owns all the property. I don't know. Uh, famous comedian who has a compound out there, owns a lot of real estate. Uh, so it's just outside of that, I guess, is like the, the nearest big town. But this is like, you know, there's a general store. There's a couple campers. There's a couple sheds. You know, everybody's kind of far. It's like farmland. Uh, it's got these two hustlers. Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward, just kind of these two dudes uh, just trying to do any odd jobs around town to make money with dreams of escaping the small town and going to the big city. Um, and then one day, some crazy shit happens. They find a, one of the town members, one of their friends, is up in a like a, a electric power line thing, but like kind of the big industrial ones that you see out in the the nothing lands and uh kind of climbed up there and kevin bacon climbs up and finds that he's dead he died of dehydration they're like what the fuck why what happened it's because there's giant worms 
and they discover it and it becomes this movie where you know the all the different people which there are interesting characters very stereotypical type of characters but i enjoy kind of having those strong flavors in a somewhat b movie uh a very i very much a b movie i guess uh but one of my favorites uh so you have like the the uh, kind of podunk hillbilly kind of Kevin Bacon and and Fred Ward, and then you got like the super right wing prepper type family that has like a bunker and like all kinds of weapons. Um, then you have like the foreigner who runs the store. In this case, it's an Asian dude. Um, and then you got you know the single mom. Uh, so it's, it's interesting characters, but it gives you all the kind of stereotypes. The scientist is a, a young college student. She's, um, you know, nerdy. You get your nerdy scientist who's also the, the love interest for Kevin Bacon, um, you know, which is allows it's, I don't know. It's, it's fun. So it's like, you know, they're trapped in their, their town and then they have to like try and find a way out. And it's just, it's kind of like, it's very much in 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 some ways like the journey you would go on when you watch 1917 except for instead of world war 1 you're in a small desert town escaping uh worms just intense journey them trying to get out of town although it doesn't really the movie isn't really all of the, it's you know the discovery of these things uh kind of um getting the town together and it's not just them running away but so that was kind of a bad bad comparison um but yeah i i do enjoy it however this movie i think because it's pg-13 they they use mother humper which watching it on tv i always thought that that was dubbed in for tv but it is on Netflix right now. I think all the whole franchise, I think, is on Netflix right now, which I might rewatch all of the franchise. Uh, I might not also. But uh, Mother Humper is in the, the legit version, and it is off-putting. It is just sad. I, I Maybe he's trying to do it because he doesn't want to be offensive to the nerd girlfriend or the nerd love interest. But it just sounds wrong. I, it even looks dubbed. It looks almost like they they were threatened with a, a bad rating or something, having a horror movie with the art the uh, fucker in it, with motherfucker in it, that they changed it to Mother Humper. Um, but it's also funny, you know, because it is a B movie that they would say stupid shit like that. Um, I would love, I would love to see an R-rated reboot of this first movie. I know that there's sequels. I think they came out with a recent sequel, but just to see like an like a good director put some money into it, um, try and do as much special practical effects as possible, like this one has. You know, there's scenes where the the worm's going under, and you're seeing like post fly. I mean, it's the fun part of this movie is that it's all practical effects because it's 90, 1990 low budget horror movie, um, but they make it work. They make it work, and I think with just a little bit of cleanup with digital effects now. You get some better camera work. You get some better acting, a uh, little better writing, you know, maybe some nuance to the characters a bit. Uh, that, could be, they, that could be a very successful franchise to be rebooted. Um, even if they took the, the path. Like the sequels to this, it's all about the worms evolving and changing, going from a worm state to like a, a bipedal state. Um, and then I think they eventually fly, maybe. I don't know. There's they they go through different progressions and different evolutions, but uh I love this movie. It, it you know, it doesn't necessarily hold up, but it if you wanna like a it's definitely got some comedic moments. It's I think it's well made for the time for what it is. Uh and it's just it's it's uh early Kevin Bacon. Like you could even have Kevin Bacon come back. Like put more money into it, get Kevin Bacon in it, uh, to reprising his role, you know, and uh, maybe as a different, maybe he plays the Fred Ward character, uh, but that would be an amazing. I, as far as reboots go, I would not mind seeing a reboot of of this, uh, even though I do love this movie so much. And Ron Underwood directed City Slickers, which is also a great movie. 
Uh, but that's kind of, he hasn't really done a whole lot. He just does a lot of TV now, uh, but he kind of kind of fell off. But Tremors and City Slickers, two of my favorite. He also did Mighty Joe Young, but I'm not, that's not a movie that really stuck with me. I don't even know if I've seen it. Uh, but that's it for this episode. Go watch Tremors now on Netflix. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Go buy my artwork over at InspiredDisorder.com and save 25% when you use coupon code RTS. Follow me on social media at Ray Taylor. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out!